How does it taste, James? Very good. That's Sundari's uh, famous oatmeal. Oh, can I buy some of it? Heart healthy oatmeal. You don't have heart problems. I have heart problems. Yeah, that's true. So you you can eat the almonds. Yeah, true. This tree here's got lots of almonds on it, and they're quite good. Yeah. I crack them here on the wall and eat them for my heart. They're heart healthy. Yeah. So I do this later. But first, I have a question, and maybe. Our audience also had the question before. Yeah, all questions are universal questions. Everybody has to be doubt. Yeah. So I have a question about Dharma and Adharma and conflicts in the world. But it can also be personal conflicts. But uh, when we open the newspaper, we hear about, for example, the Ukrainian conflict with Russia. And each side claims their move is right uh, doing the Dharmic thing. And some people give their lives to defend their country, and yeah, others yeah. take the next step. Uh, and others give their lives to destroy that country. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and people, both of them think it's right. Yeah. The people who are destroying Ukraine think it's right, and the people who are saving Ukraine think it's right. Yeah. Right? So, how can we differentiate what is Dharmic and what is not Dharmic? Well, there, there's three. Dharma is a, a very. Uh, complex topic in the Bhagavad Gita Krishna says when Arjuna asks him about karma he, he he means Dharma also because you don't have karma without Dharma and you don't have Dharma without karma why because the field of action is a field where there's a moral choices taking place all the time hmm. what's right how should I act it's always a, a question to, you know so he's really asking, when Arjuna is asking, well, you know, what's the right thing to do? He's really asking, what's, where does the principle of Dharma, where does right and wrong come from? Yeah. And right, so that, the Gita is actually do with the problem of Dharma, which is beyond Dharma and Adharma. In other words, the source of Dharma. Well, what is the source of Dharma? The source of Dharma is what? existence shining as awareness mm. that's non-dual mm. awareness is non-dual it's not two so there's no dharma and ad dharma for awareness mm. it's just what is it's just the truth so how is it that that particular truth uh, is a solution for the problem of the right and wrong here because as you can see, you know, if, if you define right as getting what you want and avoiding what you don't want, then anything can be right and anything can be wrong. Because mm -hmm. it's totally up to individuals' likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. So there they're confusing their fears and their desires with what's right. They think that, you know, getting what I want is what's right and getting what I don't want is what's wrong, yeah. right? So that means what? There's just endless conflict here, which is what we see in the world. There's outer conflict between, you know, people and nations and, and families, and there's outer conflict, and then that's all born from inner conflict, because the inner conflict has not been resolved by knowledge of what, of what true dharma is. So I have to like make an inquiry into the self to solve this problem. The self is what is Dharma. It is Dharma with a capital D, mm. not with a small d and a, uh, and a small a d. A Dharma means not Dharma. So, uh, so that means what? Dharma and a Dharma are in duality, but what? The Dharma, which is beyond duality and non-duality, beyond uh, is what what's real and true mm. what you can always count on so if you if you know that you're always right but not right with reference to wrong in other words you're always good that's what dharma means are always good mm. now what is it that's always good myself mm. freedom love that's called dharma Love is always good. Freedom is always good. Mm. Huh? 
So, so those are the highest values that we all have because everything we do is what? For freedom and for love. You know, those are two ways of looking at it. Some people are seeking freedom. Some people are seeking love. But when they find out what freedom is, they discover that freedom's love. And they find out what love is, they discover love is what? Free, freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from incompleteness and need, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. So the only solution here is, is, to, uh, is to make an inquiry. Mm. And Vedanta, well, how, does, what, how does it inquire? It's, it's a practical method of analyzing you know, objects that appear here in reality. Situations, people, all these things, and reducing them to their source, to their cause. Okay. Now you, you might say, well, you know, like I'll give you an example of, of, of how inquiry works. If you say this is a sweater, um, I, I said, and the sweater's good because it's, it's cold today. It's not really that cold, but I've got a warm sweater on. And, you, and I say, I say, you say, well, that looks like you have a warm sweater on. I say, no, I don't have a warm sweater on. I have what? Wool threads. Yeah. Well, what happened to my sweater? Gone. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, what, and if I did just say, well, okay, so you're wearing wool threads. Well, wool threads aren't keeping you warm, are they? Well, mm, yes, they are, but no, they're not. Why? Because because the other, they're not really wool threads, are they? Mm. What are they? Atoms, protons, and neutrons. Mm. Now, so atoms and protons and neutrons are keeping you warm? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, they are, but no, they're not because atoms, protons, and neutrons can't keep you warm. Because mm. mm -hmm. they're just concepts that we remove. How do we remove the concept of atoms, protons, and neutrons? We say, well, what's their constituent elements? What does not change, yeah. yeah. No, what is their source, their cause? Yeah. Well, we go to what? Mesons, bosons, and what? Mesons and quarks, okay? Mm. Now now I'm wearing quarks and mesons. Do they change? Are they, are they? Constantly. Yeah, they change. Constantly. Constantly changing, huh? Mm. And then we go to bosons. Do they, well, now we've removed the quarks and so forth mm. and and now we got bosons do bosons change yeah they do they're like you can't they don't you can't even tell what they are because sometimes they look like particles and sometimes they look like waves mm. so they look like little particles zipping and you know appearing and disappearing and sometimes they look like waves going like this mm. so they can't be real because you can't even determine what they are and then now how do you get rid of them how do you eliminate those problems space mm. because those things only appear in space well then how do we get rid of space well we have to find something that's causing space mm. what is causing space what in other words what is it without which there is no space and that would be existence shining as awareness mm. So now we got to existence shine as awareness and we've eliminated space as reality. Now does the existence shine as awareness, does it change? No. No? So I'm re wearing what? Existence shining as awareness. In other words, there's no sweater here, there's no time here, there's no space here, there's no anything here. Nothing ever actually happened. Mm. It just seemed to happen because of what? Because I'm ignorant of the fact that uh, there's only awareness. Yeah, but you're still wearing a sweater. You're not walking around naked. <laughs> well, no, my body's wearing a sweater. I'm naked. Awareness is naked. Awareness has no sweaters. Yeah. Uh, awareness, you can't protect awareness. Mm. It doesn't need protection because it's what? It's eternal. It's unborn. Yeah. But so coming back to the conflict in Ukraine, for example, so what is the appropriate uh, 
actions that people can take when they are in the middle of the conflict? Well, each per you know, each person is going to what? To make a choice according to their conditioning. Yeah. And you're going to get different choices. So there's there's different solutions for different people. Yeah. But but both of those people are what are they actually seeking? Freedom. Freedom from choice. Yeah. They don't want to have to choose between what's right and wrong all the time. Yeah. Isn't it? That's a big conflict. Choosing between what's right and wrong. Yeah. You spend all day long thinking about it. You know, should I eat a, I'm always worried about my food, you know, because I'm a heart patient. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I eat this, will it raise my blood pressure? That, oh, it'll raise your blood pressure. Oh, that's wrong. That's a bad food. Oh, no, it won't raise your blood pressure. This will lower your blood pressure. Oh, that's a good food. But the food is food. Mm -hmm. right. What is, you know, what's the source of the food? Well, I'm the source of the food. I eat. My existence, awareness, uh, appears here as food, mm. which is neither good or bad. Mm. It just is. You know, if you think you're a Russian, then, you, you know, you've got one set of problems. If you think you're Ukrainian, you've got one set of problems. Mm. If you think you're neither right now, I don't have a problem because I'm not Russian or Ukrainian. Mm. Although, personally, if I take the position of as a person, mm. I, you know, attacking somebody without provocation and destroying them without uh, declaring war and, and playing by the rules of war, that's ad dharma, as far as I'm concerned. And, and the Russians are wrong. Mm. And you can see what's going happening now because they're actually wrong. There's more people in the world who believe what? That it's wrong to do this. Hmm. You know, like if 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 the Russians had said, "Okay, we we think you're we think you're bad guys, and we're going to attack you, prepare for an attack," and they warned them, and, or or surrender to us, and we won't attack you. They talk like that. Hmm. Then they give the Ukrainians a choice: they can surrender or they can not surrender. It's up to them. Hmm. Right? Then the then the karma, the dharma, is on the Ukrainians. Hmm. Even though ultimately it's on the Russians because they're the ones who are making, they got more power, so they're making the. But nobody has more power than ignorance, hmm. than God. God. Ignorance is God. God. God means what? God means not knowing that what, or taking what you see to be real, and not knowing that the one who sees is real. So. So the only solution to the Ukrainian conflict is what self-knowledge, because that's going to take away the, the ignorance of the Russians and the Ukrainians, and they're going to stop fighting. But is that going to happen? No, it's not. So, so this war is going to take place where? In in the apparent reality in the world. In the Dharma field. In the Dharma field, and what? And Dharma will eventually prevail. Hmm. Until what? until adharma prevails mm. and then what that will generate a reaction mm. which is called dharma mm. and then the dharma will prevail mm. so in the world you have always this back and forth mm. sometimes societies are, are adharmic and criminal sometimes they're dharmic and just there's a within within the dharma field there's no way out really. there's no solution in the dharma field mm. A constant back and forth. It's a constant back and forth. I mean, you look at which is why Vedanta exists. That's it. Because you want to somehow get out of it, right? The, yeah, you want to get out of this thing of having to choose between what's right and what's wrong all the time. Because you're spending all your all your time dithering, going back and forth. Yeah. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? Should I do that? Pretty soon, your mind is just constantly uh, disturbed all the time because you don't know. What's right? If you look at it from this point of view, it's right. If you look at it from that point of view, it's wrong. Mm. And and now you don't know which is right and which is wrong, because yeah. your mind is telling you one thing one time and there's something else a minute later. Mm. Well, what what are you going to believe? Yeah, and the Kurukshetra, it's the third goal, right? Dharma is the after security and pleasure. Yeah, fourth. Yeah, the fourth. Yeah, that's right. And then self knowledge. Mm. 
the mo moksha is freedom is is the fourth goal yeah in other words in other words you, want to, you want to, don't want to be stuck at the third goal you want to go up for the fourth one that's right yeah. Yeah. you don't want to get stuck in security you don't because that because that means you're what you're you're your whole problem is insecurity, and you're not insecure because you're actually whole and complete. You don't want to be stuck seeking pleasure. Why? Because pleasure implies pain. It means you're always running away from pain and always trying to gain pleasure. So there you're stuck in duality. Mm. And you don't want to get stuck in this conflict between right and wrong either. Because mm. then, how do you de determine? There's no way to determine what's right and what's wrong because it's totally personal. And that's what Krishna says in the Gita, he, yeah. that the wise man is indifferent to heat and cold, security. Yeah. Pleasure and pain. Pleasure and pain. All, so forth and so on. He gives all these, he gives examples of the various dualities mm. that that you know, that are solved by what? By understanding what you are. So the wise man is also indifferent to the conflict in the Ukraine. That's it. Mm. I mean, I, I, I was taking a position, I was arguing the point of view of, 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 that I just expressed that the Russians were basically criminals and were not playing fair. Mm. Uh, they just, they, they, they were using deceit. They, they said, we're just down here in this area to what? To do military exercises. Oh, we're not going to invade Ukraine. That's what they said. Mm. Uh, the Americans said, oh, it looks like you're going to invade Ukraine. We believe you're going to invade Ukraine. He said, no, 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 we're not. No, we're just we're doing more war games. We play war games. So it's a good place to play war games. Mm. And then immediately, what do they do? They start attacking. Mm. So that's adharmic. Mm. Now, in the world, so many nations agree with what? Dharma. So now what are they doing? They're making life t t hard on the Russians. Mm. In fact, the American, the American Defense Secretary, they didn't, did not, he didn't know that the microphone was on. But somebody asked him, well, what are you actually doing in Ukraine? He said, I mean, uh, in Ukraine, we said, well, we're not trying to conquer Russia. We're just going to degrade the Russian military. In other words, make the Russian, because we have more sophisticated advanced weapons and, the, the, and technology than the, the Russians do. Mm. Most of the technology that's used to operate their weapons come from the West, mm. from, from not from Russia. They have to buy this technology off the market through third parties, China and mm. America and so forth and so on. Mm. And, and so he said, no, no, we're, we're just going to reduce their capability for war. Because it's wrong to like steal your neighbor's property, and it's wrong to ethnic cleanse, and it's wrong to do all these things. Mm. We don't believe in that. That's a dharma. So the forces of dharma have come in together, and, and Russia's not a happy country right now. Mm. You, you can see that. Yeah, I've been recently to Turkey, and I spoke with many Russians who were there on vacation, and all of them said they don't want this. They, yeah, they want their freedom back. They want peace back. They didn't expect it. They they believe what uh, Putin was saying. You know that it's just war games and they're just uh, you know just staying uh, vital militarily to protect the Russians from attacks. That's all. Mm. That was bullshit. They, they were they were just to, trying to grab a piece of land. It was the same problem with Iraq. Iraq went and stole, just walked across the border and stole eight or ten billion dollars from the Kuwaitis. And what happened then? The Americans said, no, that's not right. So we had a teaching war. It wasn't a real war. It only lasted a short time, a few days really. They just, they just said, we're going to punish you and to show you that it's wrong to steal your na your your property of someone else. Mm. That's against the rules. Nobody wants to have their property stolen. Mm. And these people are criminals. They just go and steal it because they have the power. Right? So so and so what the Americans pushed them back. 
then of course there was all this fear. Oh my God, there the weapons of mass destruction. There were no weapons of mass destruction. All the the, the Iraqis were doing was partying. Mm. When they when they went into these palaces, they all they found was was luxury handbags and goods and whiskey and all this shit. So they were spending all that money they stole from the Iraqis on a party life. Mm. And so they, they weren't interested in war at all. They got what they wanted. They were just partiers and enjoyers and that's all. And then later on we had that same thing happen. Not the same thing, but the same idea happen in, in uh, Yugoslavia. Well, there was a, a Croatia and, and so forth and so on. No, of course, it, uh, Serbia. There, the, the, the other so Yugoslavias. They, they, the Americans said, it's not right to ethnic cleanse. So you better get rid of Slobodan Milosevic. Because hmm. he was an ethnic cleanser. He, he hated anybody that wasn't a Yugoslavia, and he was killing them. So the American says, don't do that. That's wrong. Don't ethnic cleanse. It's not right. Hmm. And, and this, so, so you got to get rid of this guy, Slobodan Milosevic. And the, the Yugoslavian says, no, we want to keep him. We like him. Mm. He's our champion. He's our gladiator. He's protecting us from those awful Serbians or whatever they were. I don't know. Whatever they were. And um, the Americans said, "Okay, then uh, if you think like that, we will return you back to the Middle Ages." Mm. So what did they do? They started bombing the bridges across the river there. They started destroying their communications facilities. And within what? Within a couple of weeks, the Yugoslavians realized, oh, we better get rid of this guy. So they changed their, their attitude. Or at least they changed it enough to stop the war. They still have that attitude now, a lot of, a lot of Yugoslavians. But at least what? They learned their lesson. Mm. Huh? That you don't go kill people because they're different from you. Mm. So, you know, so this is all a dharma and ad dharma issue. What's right and what's wrong. And, and in the long run, dharma is going to prevail. And the one who is interested in self understanding, uh, self knowledge, he, he or she will decide on her conditioning what is on, right. On his or her, yeah, because you, you're, you're not going to solve, no individual is going to solve this problem outside. Hmm. The, the, all the problems outside are because individuals in haven't solved the problem inside. Mm. So we say you got to solve the problem yourself, <coughs> and there you take one sort of disturbed individual out of society, and what? Mm. And so some of the conflict is removed from society. Yeah. So there is just a personal individual thing, right? And you're we're not doing it because we want to save the world. Mm. The world's fine as it is from our point of view. Mm. There's always going to be dharma and ad dharma. Mm. We do it because we want to be free of the of the choice. Having having free will is a huge problem. Mm. It's a huge problem. So if you have, if there is a seeker of self knowledge in wherever Ukraine, Iraq, Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia, you, the advice would be to to do what he or she thinks is best for following the path of self-knowledge. Yeah, that doesn't mean you don't fight for your country. Yeah. But if you fight for your country, you better do it with the karma yoga knowledge. Mm. Huh? And you better do it fairly and dispassionately and take whatever result comes because the results are not up to you. Mm. That's, and, that's just common sense. And Krishna said in the Gita that if you follow your path, and you do it, uh, as you said, with the right attitude, then you can gain great uh, success. Yeah, you'll then, then you will gain success. Mm. And that's what everybody wants, is they want to be successful here. Mm. Successful means what? Free of free. Free of what? No, free. free. They, they want to be free. Success, free. Yeah. Successful means they want to be free. Mm. Yeah. Everybody wants to be.